In this video, we are going to look at solving a system of equations using the Gauss-Jordan method. We're going to start in this video with a system of equations with two variables and two equations. And this is just to get us used to the concepts and the terminology of the Gauss-Jordan method. We actually solved this exact system in a previous video using substitution, and it probably was the best and easiest way to do it. But I want to use this, this system just to introduce the concepts in the Gauss-Jordan method. So what we're going to see is that the Gauss-Jordan method is a very, very systematic step-by-step -step process. Of solving systems of equations. And that's going to be especially useful when we have three variable linear equations, which means that we have to have three different equations to solve. Our first step is going to be to write the system as a matrix. A matrix is just a, an array of rows and columns of numbers. And we're going to see that our matrix here, each row side to side is going to represent an equation and each column is going to represent a variable or our constants. So our matrix here is going to be five, which is the coefficient of the X here, and four, which is the coefficient of the X here, and then minus three, positive one, and then I'm going to draw a line where the equal sign was, and my 22 and 21. And what we're trying to do, what our objective is, is to get this matrix into the form where we have a one here and a zero here, and a zero here and a one here, and we just have numbers here and here. Because once I've done that, this equation, putting my X and my Y back in, and putting my X and my Y back in, this equation, this system, is just going to read X equals and Y equals. So that's where we're headed with the Gauss-Jordan method. So my first step is to get this one. Get a one in, and this space right here where I'm getting my one is called row one, column one. The rows go side to side and the columns go up and down like on a house. So to get a one in row one, column one, I'm going to use the elimination method. We practiced the elimination method in the previous video. I'm sorry, we're not using the elimination method. What we're doing is we're going to multiply the entire equation by the reciprocal of five because five times one fifth equals one. So we're multiplying the entire first row by one-fifth. And I'm going to go ahead and do the work over here. So I have one-fifth times row one. One-fifth times five is one. Negative three-fifths and twenty-two-fifths. And that's going to replace the first row. I didn't do anything to the second row, so I'm going to just recopy it. Then my third step here is going to be to get a zero everywhere else in column one. So 
So if I'm getting a zero everywhere else in column one, I'm getting a zero right here. I'm eliminating that 4x. And if we remember how we did this with the elimination method in the previous video, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the first row by the negative of that number, the negative of the four, and then we're going to add that back to that row. So let's see what happens when I do that. If I do that, if I do those steps, if I do negative four row one plus row two, what happens is I have negative four times this first row And that's going to be negative 4, positive 12 fifths, and negative 88 fifths. So this right here is negative 4 row 1. I still need to add back row 2. So I have 4, 1, and 21. And I add those two rows. And when I do that, notice the negative four plus the floor is zero. That's why we did what we did to get that zero. And then 12 fifths plus one, one is the same thing as five fifths. So that's 17 fifths. And 21 is the same thing as 12 fifths. So that's 18 fifths. So this is my new row two. So when I write back in my system here, in my matrix, I didn't change the first row, so I rewrite it. And then my new row two Now, I have my one and my zero, just like I had intended. So my next step is to move to the second column and get my one. We're always going to get the one first whenever we move to a new column. So my next step is to get a one. And now we're in row two, column two, right here. So what I'm getting a one is 17 fifths. Now think back to what we did right here. When we wanted to get a one there, we multiplied by its reciprocal, one fifth, because five times one fifth equals one. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal of 17 fifths which is 5 over 17 times that whole row. Going to need to erase that because I need more room here. So I'm going to multiply 5 seventeenths times row two. So I have five seventeenths times my second row here, which is zero, 17 fifths, 17 fifths, which gives me zero, one, one. And this is my new row two. Notice whenever I write my row operations, what I'm doing is saying, this is what has to happen. These are the row operations that have to happen to get my new row two. I did not change row one. And my new row two looks like this. 
So now we know, actually, at this point, we know that y is equal to 1. And we can use back substitution into the top equation to solve for x. But we're going to go ahead and finish this out. We're going to go ahead and do our last step here, which is to get a 0 everywhere else in column 2. So I'm looking here, and I want to get a 0 right here. Now remember how we did this last time. We had to multiply and add. Whenever you're doing elimination, whenever you're getting a 0, you're using elimination. You have to multiply and add. So I'm going to multiply the second row, row 2, by the negative of this, positive 3 fifths, and then add it back to row 1. And I need to put this, I need to put this beside the row that's changing. So I'm going to go ahead and move this up. So I need positive 3 fifths, row 2, plus row 1. Because when I do that work, when I do that work, 3 fifths times row 2 plus row 1. So I have 3 fifths times the second row, 0, 1, 1. And then I'm going to add that to row 1. Zero plus one is one. Three fifths minus three fifths is zero, which is exactly what I wanted to happen. And then three fifths plus 22 fifths is 25 fifths. Which is five. So my new row one goes back into my system. 1, 0, 5, recopy my old row 2, and this is my matrix. And what this tells me is if I were to put my x and my y and my equal sign back in here, that I have x equals 5 and y equals 1, so my ordered pair is 5, 1. Now, obviously this is a lot more work than when we solve this using substitution. This would not be the best method to solve this system. We have done this using the Gauss-Jordan method to illustrate the Gauss-Jordan method. And I want to point out some patterns here. Notice, after we wrote it as a matrix, we got a 1, row 1, column 1, and then we got a zero everywhere else in column one. Once we'd done that, we moved to column two. We got a one, row two, column two, and then we got a zero everywhere else in column two. And we're going to see in our next video if we have a matrix with three variables and three equations, we're going to do the same thing and then we're going to move to column three, get a one, row three, column three, and then get zeros everywhere else in column three. Also, I want to point out, I want to make sure that you're aware here that when we're getting a one, to get a one, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, multiply only by the reciprocal. And remember, reciprocal just means flip the fraction over. To get a zero, we use a completely different process. 
So you have to be very aware before you start each step. Am I getting a one right now or am I getting a zero right now? So to get a zero, what we're going to do is use the elimination process, which remember is to multiply. And we're going to multiply by the negative of what we're changing. And multiply and add back to the row that's changing. And notice whenever we multiply, we're going to multiply the row where we just got the one in the previous step. And that will happen every time. In our next video, we're going to look at a three variable, three equation system. And I'm going to write all of the steps first, and we're going to see that they're gonna be similar to what we're doing here. Getting a one, getting a zero, getting a one, getting zeros, because that's all the Gauss-Jordan method is. It's getting ones and getting zeros in a very systematic fashion. Also, notice the way I have set my paper up here. I have all of my matrices over here on the left, and then I have all of my row operations over here on the right. And I recommend that when you're doing these problems, you set it up that way. So you can keep your matrices on the left, nice and organized, and then do your row operations over on the right. It's also important that as you're working through, you actually write what your row operations are. Notice here, getting this row operation, getting a one, I was multiplying by reciprocal. Getting a one, I was multiplying by reciprocal. When I was getting a zero, I was multiplying and adding, multiplying and adding. And you're going to see that pattern in our next example as well.